Since the most important aspect of the data mapper is obviously the data, the data viewer is a central part of the module. It displays the contents of the data source that's currently loaded in the data mapper in a way that is easy to view and interact with. What is seen in the data viewer, however, is not simply the raw data source. It's formatted to fit your screen and can be modified through the use of a preprocessor. The data viewer itself is surrounded by two different areas. On the top, the toolbar, and on the left, the data map. The toolbar is simply used to control a couple of the options in the viewer. For example, with text file data sources, the font displaying the text can be changed. A button can also hide the data map, and zoom controls are also present. Some of the toolbar features can be unavailable depending on the data source type. The data map on the left gives you precise indications on how the cursor moves within the data mapper. The cursor defines where data extraction starts. It starts at the top left of the screen and moves down as you go through data. When extracting data, it's always extracted using an offset or relative position from the current cursor location. This is how we can extract totals at the end of an invoice with a variable number of lines since the total is always at the same distance to the last line of the invoice. The offset is always the same. The data map then can indicate loops, go-tos, as well as condition results for each line. Take a look at this example. Clicking on the repeat step shows on which lines the loop takes place. Or click on the go-to within that loop to show which lines are skipped. Clicking on a condition shows whether that condition is true or false on each line. There are three different ways to create a data selection inside the data viewer depending on the data source type that's currently loaded. Data selections can be used for conditions, repeats, and extraction steps. Let's start with tabular data, which includes both CSV and database data types. Tabular data is displayed, guess what, in a table, where multiple fields appear for each lines or row in the original data. Selections can only be done on each line, meaning you cannot select data from multiple rows at the same time. You can select multiple fields at once on the same row using features you'd expect. Click and drag to select multiple fields, or use control click and shift click combinations. PDF and text are both handled pretty much in the same way. You can select any area on the page of one or more lines. These selections can be moved and resized simply by dragging them and using the resize handles respectively. As long as data selections exist, any step you add does not remove that data selection. So here's a small trick to extract multiple lines. Make a selection for the first line, Click on Add Extract step, move the selection to the next line, then click Add Extract field, and so on and so forth until the end of the data you want to extract. To actually use the data selection instead of moving it, use the drag icon at the right of the selection. For example, to drag it into the data model pane and create an extraction. PDF and text data sources are unique in the sense that if you select any extracted field in the data model pane or an extract step, you can modify the data selection for that extract field in the same way you can move and resize data selections. This changes the properties of the extract step for that field. Lastly, the XML is displayed as a tree view inside the data viewer. You can select multiple fields inside an XML file using shift click and control click even if those fields are on different levels. As you can see here, if we start with the full name and end at the total field, selecting all of them and dragging them into the data model pane for a quick extract step. You can also collapse any XML level if you're not using it, or do not need to see its contents. Note that specifically for XML files, it's unnecessary in most cases to use any go-to step. For example, if we add a repeat step,
you can see that it does not add a go to before or within the loop. This is because XML has its own methods of moving through the file, which is XPath, and we take advantage of this in the software. Once data is extracted from the data source, it's possible to see exactly where all our data comes from. Clicking on any extract step highlights any area from which it extracts data. Fields in tabular and XML data, areas in case of PDF and texts. You can also click on the preprocessor step to select all the steps in the workflow, thus showing a complete map of all the data extracted from the data source. As you may have already realized, there are multiple ways to interact with the data viewer, especially when creating data selections and using them to create steps. Dragging a data selection to the data model pane will extract the data to the selected location, either the record itself or a detail table. If any extract step is already selected, fields are added to it. Dragging a data selection into an existing extract step forces new fields to be added. A new extract step is never created. Right-clicking on a data selection displays the actions that can be done with that selection, the steps you can add with them. That menu also displays the keyboard shortcuts. Using F6 to F11 is the same as selecting the step in the right-click menu, toolbar, or menu. Clicking on a specific step in the toolbars adds that step using the current data selection as a starting point when necessary. The Steps menu at the top gives you the same list of steps to be added. 